Uh, all right, guys. So I just ate our pre-workout meal. Now we're gonna go. Uh, we're gonna go squat 500 pounds a day. Feeling pretty good. Took two days off. We're gonna go do it, maybe. And uh, yeah, see you there. First, we're gonna get some caffeine. I already drank a half a cup of coffee. You can put the camera in that jack if you want. That's what you do. You don't have to zoom in though. Oh. It's like feeling good though. Don't have its eyelids and stuff. But anyways, then we're gonna throw on probably some rain energy or bang energy or something like that. I don't have any pre-workout. Maybe two of them, who knows? And uh, we're gonna squat. I'm trying to maybe go for 500. He's starting to film. No, but anyways, here we got rain energy. We combine this with coffee. We're looking at 450 milligrams of caffeine today. And Jack's also enjoying his own energy rain right there. So right now I'm gonna drink this, and then you're gonna see me in the squat rack about two seconds after the boy is down my throat. Did you hear that crack? Did you hear that crack? They come in. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. Let's see. <laughs> So usually I don't have to go through warm-up exercises like this because when squatting every single day, um, your body is so used to doing the movement pattern, you're pretty much warmed up all the time. You're slightly like pumped all the time because you're doing it so frequently. So sometimes twice a day, I haven't really squat twice a day, but at least every single day with one day off at the most. Uh, I usually don't have to warm up through this, but I took two days off of squatting. <laughs> We're coming in today, feeling pretty fresh, so I'm going to warm up the right way. And uh, I'm gonna see if we can go hit a PR today. And this is honestly, this right now, whatever I hit today, I think I might end this uh, Bulgarian type training. Because I mean, it's been six weeks, and after six weeks, usually results tend to go down. Maybe we'll get another week, we'll see. Oops. Just some high bars for a little bit. I plan on doing is switching to high bar squat for this because I've really been abusing low bar for a long time. Not really a bad thing. Depends on your body type and how you, how you're able. You have your strong points and uh, really those two squats don't really matter which one you do. Some guys have a better high bar. Most people I mean have, most people have better low bars. Personally, my posture chain is really dominant, so I've been really utilizing this for like the past nine months. I'd say. Yeah, about nine months, so I think I'm gonna switch it up after, you know, see how far I can get with this. And uh, we'll see if that helps me out or not. But good, I just wanna get both movement patterns, maybe develop my quads a little more. Might help with sumo deadlifts and stuff too, we'll see. Determining set right here, how fast 385 moves. It usually determines how high I can go. So that one felt, I don't know, it was okay. I'm, I've been really trying to, it was almost like a pause squat right there. I've been really trying to just hit the minimum parallel that I need you know, to be able to do this. But I got, you know, since that felt kind of hard, we have this, this trick I talked about on my Instagram today, tricking my CNF. So what I'm gonna do right now is hold this up with 550 pounds, unrack it, hold it there for a second, to really trick my central nervous system that, you know, the weight's really, really, really heavy. So when I take that off, do my lighter set, which if you lighter, so I want to see if that works. Let's see how this is going to flip. That's good, Jack. Let's do a quick set of time here. Yeah. Oh, man. I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine going down with that weight. Okay, so we just dropped, we just took off about 100, what was that? Yeah, 100, exactly 100 pounds. We're gonna see how easy this goes up. That's the determine if we're gonna go any higher. Here. Oh,
Oh, go to good. So as you can see, I just dumped four or five. I know I can get four or five, but I think it's just because I'm tired. I mean, it was almost half of the clip did cut out, but I know I can get four or five. So I was just gonna say four or five will be my new high bar max. And it's amazing how different of a feeling high bar is, and you realize how weak my core is. I got, I got some core weakness going on right here, and how strong my posture chain is compared to my core. And it makes a lot of sense, you know, with my conventional deadlift being so much lower than my sumo. You know, posterior chain is just on me developed. I just got to develop the front part and the quads a little bit. And I think it's going to help a lot, help a lot of the lifts. Like, I actually can't wait to do this, even though it was a terrible workout. It's you, Jack. Yeah, I'm just going to go down. So I failed for, uh, 475 today, two weeks in a row, failed that. So what this is, this is about the sixth week, seventh week maybe, of me doing Bulgarian light type training for my squat. I think I saw max every single day. So that's about the most you can get out of, uh, is the red light flashing? It's about the most you can get out of a uh, Bulgarian light type training session. And uh, any more than seven to eight weeks, you're pretty much going to run into fatigue issues and I mean, obviously, I had my rest. My rest was literally perfect the last two days. Recovery time, food, and a day off. So literally, failing tw two times like that, that's, that's what you call it. So that is done. I'm done with Bul Bulgarian Light. And uh, moving on to the next training type program. I'm going to fall more of a periodized thing. It's going to allow me to focus back more on my deadlifts, uh, my bench press a little more. And uh, yeah, but the thing is with the Bulgarian Light, I'm not disappointed I did it. I did gain. Uh, I failed 455 my first day doing it, so literally, I mean, I probably gained about 30 to 40 pounds on my squat in about six, seven weeks, so I'm not going to complain about it. And also, one of the next things I want to say is I'm going to switch over to high bar squat. So what that means is uh, literally I've been doing low bar since September last year, and I kind of abused the lift. Uh, that's a lot of... You know, I, my body hasn't really seen anything other than a squat than low bar, so it's a good time to mix it up because once you get more advanced, start hitting these advanced numbers in certain lifts like that, you have to, uh, you got to change it up because it actually can help. It can really benefit when you're up to those high, high numbers, and I can really tell uh, it's going to really help my back and my core get stronger when I switch over the high bar. I'm excited about it. Today, I dumped it twice, but I'm pretty confident I can go back in tomorrow and hit 405. On a high bar, and that'll be my starting max for this next program. Which I'm probably gonna start running a daily underlying periodization type program, you know, mixing up the rep ranges and intensities a little bit uh, for that. So that's my plan. My Instagram will have more on that, and that is also the reason why pureathletesystem.com, the two programs we have out currently right now, shred program to get you lean, which I use methods from that year round, no matter what program I'm utilizing, mostly not the workout approach but mostly the dieting and techniques. And then my other one is my novice beginner baseline strength program because 
The reason I haven't had any other advanced programs out is because uh, literally I want to test everything myself with some of my friends, see what works better than others before I go ahead and start making something that is sub suboptimal. So that's literally why I haven't made an intermediate type program yet. And I got some ideas in mind, I got some other stuff coming along, but I want to be able to program at least my get to get my bench, figure out how to program my bench to 315 before I start doing anything such as because I mean without that, I mean I can't really I can't really write things like that. So that's what we're gonna do with that. Um, and I think it's gonna be nice because I'm gonna wobble myself to work harder on my bench because my other lifts I'll put on the back burner a little bit. And that's also what I think has been taken away because I've been really focused on my deadlift and my squat this past like half year. So that's pretty much it. Bad workout. Uh, anyways, guys, stay tuned. Also, what I want to announce is I will be playing pro hockey this year somewhere. I'm going to get a pair of skates soon. Haven't trained yet. Trials in like three weeks. Probably going to vlog that. So stay tuned. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see my journey to that. We'll play in the NHL one day. We'll play in the MLB. Uh, just follow along because I'm going to document the process here and show you how my type of training, really my outlook of the pure athlete system type thing is a lot of people mix it up. I mean, I did when I was back in high school is the way I used to train. I thought sports specific training was a thing and really it is not. Sports specific training really isn't a thing, guys. The way you got to look at it is athlete, just listen to this. When you go to the gym, I don't, if I want to get better at baseball, I don't go to the gym to get better at baseball. I go to the gym to get my body in better shape, more athletic, more strong, more powerful. I train myself to get stronger and powerful in certain movement patterns that are going to carry over to certain mechanics of sports. So if I want to get better at a certain sport like hockey, I go to the rink, I start skating, I shoot pucks. I work on my skills. Going to the gym, there's no lift that's going to make my shot better. There's no, you know, I'm not going to go to the gym and squat high bar because it's better for baseball and then squat low bar uh, uh, if it's better for hockey. No, it's not like that. What you do in the gym is make yourself as strong and powerful as possible, fast. Because guess what? If you're strong and powerful, I don't care what sport you want to pick up, you going into there, you have a good baseline, you have good coordination, and no matter how bad or how good your mechanics are, the more strength and power you have behind those movement patterns. Like if two guys have the same identical baseball swing, the guy who's stronger, identical swings, is going to hit the ball farther. They're the same size. The guy who's stronger is going to hit the ball farther. That's literally, it's going to happen because he's going to swing the bat faster. Same with the guy, say two guys shoot exactly the, the same in hockey. The guy who's stronger is going to shoot the puck harder and quicker. It's going to be better because really strength just adds to your performance. So really with sports specific, specific, specific training, it doesn't really exist. You just get your body really strong and powerful. I don't care what sport you play, you're going to be good. And that is my ideal. That is why I created a pure athlete system because a lot of people don't realize this. Like, I mean, I was tricked. I was tricked for four years. It wasn't until I was 19 years old. I finally figured out how to train the correct way, you know, just I started training for strength and power because I quit because I really I didn't see any results. I was doing like this stuff and I mean I, I want to get strong. Like guys on my team that could one kid would get benched 350, his shot was 99 miles per hour. I didn't train it sports specific. I remember talking to guys like that and they're like, no, I just go to the gym, I try to get as strong as I possibly can on my squat, deadlift, and bench. Like literally that's what he does. And he was one of the, he was the fastest player I ever played with. The strongest and he shot the hardest. Like, I mean, is there a correlation there or what? I mean, literally, that's what he did. He, he just trained for strength. And that is what I want to bring out because a lot of guys get trapped in the sports specific type training. And I mean, really, instead of training for speed, but you can only max squat 225, if you train for strength and get your max squat to 400 pounds, you're going to get faster. It's training for speed, like power workouts, speed workouts, and squatting 225, that's not. I mean, the guy who gets a squat, you guys have two identical guys, once again, the guy who trains for speed and stuff, sorry about the baby, trains for speed and stuff, compared to the guy who just trains for strength, the guy who, the guy who trains for strength and moves the squat up 200 pounds, compared to the guy who is squatting 225, doesn't really care about strength and trains for speed, the guy who moves the squat up with no speed work is going to be faster. He's going to be able to put more force on the ground. You're going to get faster like that, especially when you train the correct way, and that's my mission with Pure Athlete Systems, to really show you guys. I mean, it sounds far-fetched, but guess what? I mean, that's a lot of things are. You just gotta sit back and watch, you know? Just watch, just wait, just watch me do it. What I'm gonna do is get my body as strong and powerful as possible, and move on and play sports, and play hockey, and play baseball, and you know, be able, whatever. So that's my mission with that. I might sound crazy, but that's what I'm gonna do. So I invite you guys to watch for the journey and really change, you know, the fitness industry and how everything is and really make an impact on that. And as well as just show everybody that anything's possible. So guys, thanks for watching again. I know it's kind of a different different way to end a video. 
but I mean, it's coming, and that's what I'm gonna do. So please subscribe to the channel, like the video. I'm gonna go throw some baseballs about 85 miles per hour right now. Don't train for baseball, I just train to get strong, guys. That's what I do. Please subscribe. Thanks for watching.